If you want to guarantee yourself a spot in the fantasy football playoffs, we need to be going through and buying low on these specific players to create a super team later down the line of the year. Lucky for you, I'm going to be giving you guys a list of the players we need to be buying low on and possible trade packages to get them on your team, which nobody else does. And you guys know I hate to waste people's time in these videos, so let's kick it off with Cooper Cup. This is a must buy. And I know a lot of people are skeptical of him because after he came back from his injury, he had a couple good games looking like a true wide receiver one. But then over the last two games, he had single digit fantasy points and only had 50 combined yards and then he has a bye week in week 10 to finish that off to make it all worse matthew stafford is dealing with an injury he might be out it looks like brett rippon is going to be starting in a weak matchup against the green bay defense who is top seven not to mention puka is looking like the wide receiver one right now for some reason but when we're looking at a top guy of this caliber like cooper cup there really is no buy low opportunity it's more of a buy now opportunity there's a lot of worry around the team around him what is he doing he came back from injury he doesn't look the same what's going on this this is exactly where we need to take advantage because yes he hasn't had the best string of games but he still has an elite target share and one of the most consistent despite those single digit fantasy points he still had 10 targets last week and seven the week before that and if you look at his chart so far this season or any chart from any previous year these are normal numbers they faced a great dallas defense last week a lot of his targets weren't even catchable we do not need to be getting scared over a guy that had two bad weeks but still has a very high target share he's still a top five wide receiver rest of season regardless he's the wide receiver one on the team he's still is Cooper Cup. We can't be discounting him for that. But we can get him at a discount for a guy like DeAndre Hopkins, who just came off one of the best games of his season with multiple touchdowns, a whole bunch of hype around Will Levis. Then we can package him with a guy like Jordan Addison, who's on the decline now with no Kirk Cousins. Or even some more guys like Terry McLaurin or Puka straight up, I would do that. And if you guys have made it this far in the video, make sure to subscribe if you haven't. I know we have a whole bunch of new people. And I'm sure you've gotten some good insights if you've made it all the way down here and you don't want to miss all the league winning videos coming every day. Your fantasy team will thank you but looking at another guy we need to be buying low another heavy hitter is justin jefferson and there's a whole bunch of news we need to unpack here with him so let me dive into it we get a huge injury to kirk cousins he has no achilles now he's going to be out for the rest of the season and then the vikings go through and sign josh dobbs from the cardinals and we have to be realistic kirk cousins might not be the best quarterback in the league but what he does for this offense is not very exchangeable dobbs is going to be a downgrade kirk is that guy that's going to give us top three passing volume every single year he's done it pretty much since he's been in minnesota they've been the second most pass heavy team in the nfl so far that is normal for them but now we get a clear downgrade in josh dobbs who's been averaging around 200 passing yards the entirety of this season that is about 100 less than kirk cousins and this makes all of the pass catchers in this offense value decrease just a bit but if anything justin jefferson is going to be able to overcome that with the least pushback but the fantasy players that do have justin jefferson on their team probably don't have the best record they've been sitting on him for a while i mean they lost their first round pick so because of all these reasons people are going to be scared and just over it and that is where we can swoop in and get a top wide receiver when healthy and josh dobbs has been able to support a top 20 wide receiver in marquise brown he can support one or two guys and now he's in an offense that wants him to pass more maybe he gets a bit of a different role Regardless, he's not Kirk Cousins. They're not going to be top five in passing anymore. The reality of it is if we do go through and make a trade for Justin Jefferson, we can lose in the short term so we can gain in the long term. He's going to have lower value until everybody sees him back on the field scoring some fantasy points. He's going to be untouchable again. He also has one of the easier fantasy schedules for wide receivers. If you need that on your team, go ahead and grab it. Again, we can trade guys like DeAndre Hopkins coming off a big game, Nico Collins, Tyler Lockett, or Chris Godwin straight up for him. Those guys of that level is what I would consider giving up for Justin Jefferson. Looking at another Another buy low a running back this time we need to be taking advantage of before it's too late is James Conner and I absolutely love this one because I know a lot of us are in some running back trouble maybe we have a whole bunch of bye weeks maybe we've been cooked with injuries the waivers are not that juicy either there's not much options but if we can wait a few weeks on running backs we already don't have and get James Conner that is a hundred percent a move we should make and the short answer one that you can probably expect is that Kyler Murray is coming back into this offense in a matter of weeks once he comes back this team is scoring points the wide receivers the running backs everyone Everybody's elevated. People are not going to want to trade any of these guys. He's going to inflate the value of all of these pass catchers and offensive weapons. We haven't seen James Conner play in a while. His value isn't the highest, similar to what we were saying with Alvin Kamara in the beginning of the season. He was a really, really good running back, and we see that now. But because he wasn't in the news, because he wasn't on the field, nobody was really talking about him, so his value wasn't that high, and we got him for an extreme discount. We can do the same thing for James Conner. And now I know Kyler coming into this offense might not directly help James Conner like it would a Marquise Brown or a Trey McBride, but he's going to be able to move the offense so much better. And if you have more offense, you stay on the field more, you get more goal line opportunities and more fantasy points all around. And dare I say, if the 
the Cardinals happen to win games, they're going to be in a run heavy script. A better offense is never a bad thing. And James Conner was averaging just about 15 fancy points before injury as well. He's a good running back. Then we see DeMarcado come in and get some good usage. People are worried that he's going to have a continued role, but he doesn't have the best fantasy playoff schedule. So if you want to go through and buy him before he comes back and then sell him I again after his value inflates, that would be a very, very smart move of you. I would trade a guy like Alexander Madison, Gus Edwards off a big game, Brian Robinson, any running back of that caliber to go get James Conner. Then again, if we really want to be big brained after Kyler comes back and they play a few games, we can sell James Conner high and further create our super team. And realistically, you don't even have to sell him if you don't want to. But speaking of running backs and injuries going on IR, Saquon Barkley is a guy we need to be throwing some trade packages at and getting on our team. The Giants offense is a complete mess right now. In the trade deadline, they were selling and sold some of their players. And then Daniel Jones is obviously injured. Tyrod Taylor gets injured. Now they're starting the third string quarterback. On top of the fact that their offense is already bottom five in every single offensive metric possible. This is such a bad situation and nobody wants to get near any of these fantasy players. And I don't doubt them. But if we want somebody, it's going to be Saquon Barkley because he is the literal only source of offense. Saquon is still working his way back into a full snap share from his ankle injury in week two. But since his return in week six, he's averaged 27 carries a game and five targets out of the backfield. Now, if I told you that, you must be saying, well, he must be averaging 20 fantasy points a game. That's pretty insane. No, it's only 15 points. It's going to go up. Now, yes, this isn't the traditional buy low because we should have been buying low earlier when he was still injured. If you guys watched the videos, you would have done that by now. But regardless, if you want to buy him now, you still most definitely can for a value. He still has his bye week to go through and a pretty tough fantasy schedule coming up, which is going to put a lot of people off. But generally, guys of this caliber usually aren't affected by the schedule and the strength of schedule, especially when you get the amount of receptions out of the backfield like Saquon does. It's a rare case, but we don't really have to worry about it. He's essentially the wide receiver one on this team that hasn't even seen his full potential snap share usage this season. If we can go ahead and trade a guy like, again, DeAndre Hopkins after a huge game or even Jalen Waddle straight up to get Saquon, we're doing it 100%. Good fantasy football running backs are kind of hard to come by at this point. So getting a good one locked in on our team is going to be a great idea to set us up in the future. But speaking of the future and winning, we need to be going through and adding Isaiah Pacheco. And this is for a couple reasons. He just came off one of the weirdest game against the Broncos. He only had eight carries and the Chiefs had five turnovers. And we can all agree this performance entirely by the offense and Pacheco isn't going to happen very often. He only scored six fancy points, no usage. But in context, those eight carries led the team in attempts and he averaged five yards per carry on those attempts. And he's also averaged five targets out of the backfield over the past three games. It's a very crucial part of the offense he's involved in. But the best part of the reason why we need to be buying him is because he has one of the best, if not the best fantasy football schedule for running backs moving forward, including the playoffs. This is a running back that has a floor of being a top 15 running back week in and week out because of his receiving upside that gives him a high floor. He has a great schedule. He hasn't had the best production over the past two weeks, which is really making him a good value for us. So now is the time to buy low before his matchup with Miami this week and then a bye week after. If we can get Pacheco for any combination of declining running backs like Chuba Hubbard, like Brian Robinson, or even like Najee Harris, that would be amazing. There really isn't much to say here besides he's a great running back. He's been efficient all year. He's in a great offense, one we want to be buying in on, a great schedule. He is used as the goal line back. He's getting even more receptions now than he used to. He gets all the two minute drills. He is the guy for the Chiefs. When they're scoring points, like they always do, he's going to be more valuable. Get him before he has a big touchdown game and it's pretty much impossible. Moving over to this next buy low candidate, he's a bit of an odd player because he is on extremely thin ice. And let me explain, we need to be going through and grabbing DK Metcalf. And the reason I say this is because we have a guy here that hasn't had a single digit game all season for fantasy points but he also hasn't had a game above 17 fantasy points. He's teetering in the middle of that fantasy value to where if he has a really big game, he's going to be untouchable. People would say, oh, he's back. He was never this low. He's always had good fantasy points. He's at where we drafted him. But if he tanks and has a really bad game, everybody will talk about how he's competing for targets with Tyler Lockett and JSN. He's on the decline. And then that is a complete buy low opportunity. But I don't want to be betting on that to happen. We can't buy him in any of the future weeks, but buying right now is the best opportunity. As of right now, he is the wide receiver 44 on the season. He's been restricted with some injuries. He's been taken out of games early with a concussion protocol issue. And he really hasn't played more than three full healthy games this season. Last week, he comes out. He has 11 fantasy points on 14 targets against a really tough defense. He's had one of the hardest schedules so far for fantasy football wide receivers. It does ease up, but he's already had his bye week, which is a huge plus when trading for players. And he also has a really high target share on a pass heavy offense more than most teams. And yeah, he has a good schedule, but his fantasy playoff schedule is even better. If you're primed to make the playoffs and you want that kind of guy, 
you can go ahead and get him. But even if you're not, he's a guy we need to be getting because his value won't be this low for much longer. We could easily see a scenario where he's not on the trade block by the owner after the next few weeks. He gets a matchup against the Ravens that isn't great, but isn't also bad. But then he gets to Washington secondary the week after that, which is a very, very, very easy defense to score points on. Like I said, his value is really in the middle right now. This is a top wide receiver that we can get for the low. We can trade a guy like Terry McLaurin straight up for him. I would love that. He has a really tough fantasy playoff schedule. Trade guys like Jacoby Myers, Tyler Lockett, things of that level. But that's going to finish off the list of the players we need to be buying low on right now. I appreciate you guys watching all the way through and I'll see you guys in the sell high video coming tomorrow.